What up, what up? Welcome to another VIP Bean Talk Tuesday night. It's 9.24 p.m. Eastern, June 26th. Excited for this today. Hurry up and file in. What up, Birdo? File in. We're here with the family, the VIP family. My boy Drew came to a workout the other day before he headed out to Maryland. It was good to see you, Drew. Uh, but a good VIP Bean Talk coming up. Uh, I, I'm not going to watch a lot of your guys' film. I want to. I got uh, one of my players here with me. We're going to watch some NFL film um, and just talk coverage and just talk ball. So I, I'll let you guys file in and I'll explain kind of what I'm thinking with Bean Talk going forward. Um, one of you guys, Coach Guido, what up, baby? One of you guys, uh, one of our VIP members uh, made a good suggestion um, about what to do with Bean Talk. But I'll let you guys file in for a sec. We'll pull up some NFL film. You know, maybe we'll watch the Super Bowl. Let's watch the Super Bowl. That's what we're gonna watch. We're gonna watch the Super Bowl. So we're gonna watch the Super Bowl and talk and talk coverage and talk football by watching the Super Bowl. It was a great game. It's cool stuff. What up, Graham? Your boy, yo, Graham, look who it is. Hold on, hold on, look who it is. Let's go, bro. Yeah. So for guy, let's let's do the official intro. So for people who don't know, this is Dario Highsmith. I've coached Dario the last four years. Uh, Dario was the Gatorade State Player of the Year in high school in the state of Connecticut. Uh, he was then a running back and a receiver at Wesleyan, and he's now the first full-time employee of the Sideline Hustle. He's taking over the high school and college training business in uh, <laughs> New Jersey. Yes, All right, and then this is Adam Anderson. What's up, man? What do you do? Uh, Adam from Orlando. He just finished a career at South Dakota State, yes, sir. and he's now training for the NFL. And, uh, you know, Adam's a bowler, like – He's a dude who's been kind of like an unsung hero, hasn't got probably as much attention as he deserves, but I really believe in him and his skill set, and he's here with me for the week training and everything, so it should be good. Uh, but so now that Jappa's on, I wanted to say this. So Jappa had the idea. It was Jappa's idea. He was like, yo, to be honest, like we keep watching the same film over and over because here's the issue with Bean Talk, guys, is a lot of you guys have been part of this program now for four months, and we've progressed past the fundamentals, but then there's also somebody who – literally joined yesterday and needs to do the fundamentals. So it wasn't really fair to everyone to keep watching the basic film over and over and over and go over the same fundamentals when a lot of you guys have progressed beyond that. So I think what I'm going to do now is keep the film evaluations private to like emails and I'll get back to you guys via email and everything. Um, I'll move this over too. All right. So I'll get back to you guys. Uh, I'll do more of the, the evaluations via email privately. I want to spend this time just like learning the game. Let's let's watch film. This is your time for you guys to ask questions. Uh, you know, and we'll just watch coverage. Like, I don't think we do enough coverage talk. It's really hard for me to make teach tapes on coverage. It's just not as easy to tell a story in one minute as it is to like break down a route. So like I, I've struggled to make good coverage content, but I can talk coverage off the cuff. So let's just like use this time to talk coverage and for you guys to ask questions rather than, you know, correcting shitty double ups and all these drills you guys don't know how to do. I'm not going to waste everyone's time with that. We'll keep that private. All right, so it makes sense. If anyone has thoughts or comments, you know this is an open forum. Grayson says he's with that. Uh, is it good if I send my film whenever? Yeah, so at this point, you can send your film whenever. Like, I'll get back to it when I can, and my goal is to get back to you at least once a, once a week. So usually you guys send your film on Tuesday. Tuesday was my opportunity to get back to you for that week. Now just send it in when you can, and I'll try and take note of responding it before it says hit your inbox seven days ago. That's basically my goal. So if I, and if I don't get back to you within the week, then call me and motherfuck me and tell me I suck because I do. And that's fair. Accountability is important here and you guys need to hold me accountable too. All right. So I don't really have a plan for this. I'm just going to watch. I think we just watch football. Like, so this is what I do with Mo, with Sanu and, and these guys. Like when Mo and I watch film virtually, we just put a game on and just observe things. We don't like have a plan of what to watch or anything. We just put a game on and talk about what we see. So that's kind of my plan now. Treat this as an open forum and let's rock. All right, here's the kickoff. You know what? We should talk special teams, but no, today's not the day. Today is not the day. So first play of the game. Um, man, this game was so dope, bro. I remember being here. That shit was fire. All right, so first play of the game. Let's see what we got. All right, so why do teams use motion? Okay, teams use motion uh, to force the defense to communicate, but more than anything, teams use motion to determine is it man or zone coverage, right? So let's figure out what this is. It's pretty simple. You guys can all tell. Right now, we're lining up pre-snap. I know. I got to angle it up so that it can see. Oh, you good. 
good. No, he's got to do that. Uh, so right now it's one high, right? Everyone sees one high safety. Sorry. Yeah, ask questions. Ask questions while you watch film, for sure. This is the plan for you to ask questions. And if you guys don't understand something, I just want you to, this is an open forum. We'll go 40 minutes, an hour. This is NFL Game Pass, Jap, but it's currently free still during quarantine. All right, so one high. Everyone see it's one high. Now we got to figure out, is this going to be one high zone or one high man? As soon as you motion and you see this guy running with him, you can and run him back and forth. You can assume it's one high man-to-man coverage. All right, but it's the NFL. This is why watching NFL film is tricky, right? This is what makes the NFL so cool. What also makes it so cool is my thing freezing over and over. This is what makes the NFL cool. Okay, so watch them. They're going to give the man-to-man look like this. And then they're going to make an adjustment and say, all right, we just showed man. Now let's get into a two-eye zone look. That's some pretty complicated shit. You, know, you won't see this in, in regular football, in your levels of football. But just understand what they're doing, right? They're try- the, as much as the offense might be trying to keep the defense off balance by using motion, the defense is doing the same shit. Okay, we're going to show you a, a one-high a one man-to-man look. You make- so now what they're doing, right? A lot of times NFL teams, they have two plays called. They go in motion and they have a man play called and a zone play called. And if it's man, they'll call one play. If it's zone, they'll call the other play. So what the defense just did, they gave them the man-to-man look. And said, all right, make your man-to-man check. If you are running two plays, make your man-to-man check. Because we know we just showed you a man-to-man look. Right? Man-to-man. All right, now Pat might say, check, 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 alert. And now they go to high zone. And then we're just running option. All right, so let's watch. Let's watch. This is dope. Let's watch on the edge, right? So now we're running speed option to this side. Okay, your job as the corner, as the safety, or as the receiver is to get rid of this corner. So use a little tip, tilt technique, right? You guys remember tilt technique? Steal a release, run the DB off, sell pass, and then make your block. Don't, uh, don't just block with the line of scrimmage. It'll take too long. Sell pass, take your release. Take a release, run him off. Now he's defending pass, use the momentum against him, and now Richard Sherman's on the bench before he even has to worry about making a block. All right, one last time. This is how you make your job easy, blocking as a wideout. Watch down bottom one last time. Okay, let's watch the whole thing. One high man. Here it comes. But you got to know on film they could check to this. Now they, now they make the check. Now it looks like two high zone. Looks like cover two. Again, watch the tilt technique, right? So you're looking at all this here, and you're thinking like, all right, I'm running him off right now. It's one high man. Now once you get the two high zone look, you know you can't run this guy off. You know you got to block him. Right, so now you, but but don't just you don't have to stalemate him at the line of scrimmage. Run him off, make him defend pass. Now you use momentum against him, and now you can jack his ass up. Really good job by the receiver down there. That's my boy Sammy Watkins, who ended up being the Super Bowl hero. See some of the communication here. See if there's anything notable. Good shit by Sammy. Good to see there. And that, again, for that, go, those of you guys who don't know, this is gamepass.nfl.com. It's free during quarantine. So go buy this shit or go watch this shit right now. Otherwise, it's $100 a year. All right, now we got tight end trips, right? We got a tight end here, three receivers to the field. A lot of, I say tight end trips because a lot of defenses, right? This is Travis Kelsey, who, who's treated like a receiver. So that's why Richard Sherman's still here. If it was someone other than Travis Kelsey, a different tight end, they might put a linebacker here and put the corners over. That's why it's important to know the tight ends in the backside, right? you got to figure out how is this team going to treat the tight end. If it's fucking some fat, slow tight end, run-blocking tight end, they're not putting their best corner on this guy. They're going to put their best corner on Tyree Killer, Sammy Watkins over here, right? But because this is Travis Kelsey, and he's probably the second most important offensive weapon on the field behind Tyree Kill, they're going to leave their best corner on him. But it's important to know that as, as, as a receiver, right? Trips, regular trips with the tight end as the number three receiver is very different than trips with the tight end as the number one receiver backside. Because they will play this differently. They generally do not want to match up their best cover guy on a tight end who can't run very well. This is an exception because it's the best tight end in the league. Okay? But just understand that part of it. Again, what's it looking like? Looks like one high, but they could definitely get to two high. Here it goes drifting back. Probably looking like some sort of two high zone. Probably roll this safety to the middle. Bump him to the middle. Play four cheat. There we go. It's four cheat. All right, let's talk about what four cheat is. All right, let's talk about four cheat. Okay, so cover four. We all know what cover four is? No, oh, this is the wrong play, isn't it? Yeah, it's the first play. Or do we just miss this play? No, 
now. So there. All right, so, right, cover four is cover four, right? This guy plays a deep quarter. He plays a deep quarter. He plays a deep quarter. He plays a deep quarter, right? But now you go three by one. You're not going to have two guys defending deep quarters here when you got more guys in the field. So we play what we call four cheat. These two guys play cover four, so everyone here is playing four. Now his job is to cheat or is maybe four flow. His job is to defend number three vertical, okay? So if he comes vertical here, the safety is going to rob that and push over and play cover four just with some extra help to the strength. That's what four cheat is. That's what they're playing here. So watch this backside safety's eyes. He's going to get his eyes on the number three receiver. See how he's flowing there? He goes vertical and he's ready to kind of See how, see how he's ready to kind of defend. This safety is ready to rob any of these middle benders here. Now, he can play more aggressively over the top because he knows he has his inside help. Okay, so understand this, right? You're playing four cheat. We'll break down all the things this allows defense to do. He's going to push more to the field, this front side safety, because he knows he has help coming to him. This guy now knows he has help coming over the top, so he can afford to be more aggressive jumping any hitch routes, jumping any flat routes. All right, does that make sense to everybody? Because he, because this guy's pushing over in four cheat, he knows he has help, so he can get over the top more. He knows he has help over the top, so he can be more aggressive robbing underneath stuff. That's a lot of times what they teach in four cheat or four flow. So four cheat and four flow are the same thing. Four cheat, four flow are the same thing. Just two different names that code. I've called them both in my career. All right, this this guy right here, this this nickel safety, this nickel linebacker. All right, you can see that they're kind of playing in a way like almost two cheat, right? Like. So in four, in regular cover four, this guy would be the flat player, meaning it's his job to rob number, to, to get underneath number one if he runs a hitch or to run with anyone in the flat. But again, it's cheat and it's the NFL. So because he knows, because this guy's going to the top, he's going to read two. He's going to read one and two right here. So he's not just going to just blindly backpedal. He knows he doesn't have to get over the top like this. He's coming over the top. He's got help. So let me just read this. Let me try and jump any of this inside stuff. So therefore, because they're playing two read, what I would call it, which is still quarters, he doesn't have to be as aggressive to the flat, right? So he's reading something, he's reading, and they can kind of play off what the defense does rather than just be robots and run to their spots. This is what most NFL teams play now. They play read coverage. All right, just watch them read it. You can just get a feel for what this looks like, right? Four cheat, here comes the flow. His eyes are on number two. He's reading the number two receiver. I say this, right? If this number two receiver went out right away, then the corner's going to slice and go take this. But he comes in, so he doesn't. He's never responsible for number four. This guy's number four, this running back, right? He's not going to take number four. So as soon as two disappears, he's just going to keep pedaling and play his quarter zone. Four, number four receiver, the running back comes outside. That's the linebacker's man, right? Here comes the linebacker. He's going to go rally and make this tackle. Shitty ball. There you go. Like, everyone understand this? So again, four flow, four cheat. He's got number three back. He's got number three strong. He can play over the top. This guy's reading number two. If number two goes out, he's going to jump it. Blah, blah, blah. And he can be more aggressive inside. And there's how it plays out. Really well covered. And if they had thrown it to the back, he would have tackled him for a no yard gain. Really good coverage there. Not a good concept for it. It took Pat a while. Pat was definitely nervous at the beginning of this game. Mm -hmm. Took Pat a while here. They always think in the first half. Yeah, yeah, it's facts. The Super Bowl's bro. The Super Bowl's a different beast. Yeah. Like the Super Bowl's a different beast. It's not even a real game, bro. Like, how how are you even prepared for this? Like, everybody watching that game, bro. bro that, but like, even like, I played the state championship game this year, right? Like, we coached the state championship, and it didn't feel like a real game. Nothing's the same. Like, <laughs> like, bro, it's but it's not like you like everyone's nervous. You get you get on the bus, you run into Giant Stadium, you're out of the locker room in thirty minutes, like. All it, 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 you're talking about 16, 17 year old kids handling this. Like it's so much not a real game. It's why experience matters so much in this shit. Like mm -hmm. it's it's just interesting. Every corner can have a read version of it. Uh, I'll tell you this, Jappa. There's no one playing read coverage in Brazil, so I wouldn't worry about it. Like I, I don't know. No, not everyone has a read coverage. It's, it's just it's 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 a scheme. You know what I'm saying? Oh, we're gonna talk about this too. This is dope. Read is a scheme, so no, not everyone has read. It, it's it. Not every corner has a read version of it. Uh, does every coverage? No, you can't play read three. You can't play read cover three. A too high core. You can play read two. That's really only read coverage. There's other read shit, but not everyone can. But I'll, I promise you, no one in Brazil is playing that. But it's a, it's a good question. Something you should know. Um, read two is really you gotta have someone over the top. That you guys can play off each other, and it's it. And basically, read two means 
If everyone runs vertical, it's cover four. If someone flattens the flat, it'll become cover two. Okay? Now let's talk about this. Talk about matchups, right? A lot of times teams will start in empty to figure out if it's man or zone. How do we know it's man? Because here's a linebacker playing corner, right? This linebacker, number 57, you guys play cover two read there. That's fucking, you guys sent me some film, Jeff. Uh, sorry to demean fucking Brazil like that. Cover two read is a fucking complicated coverage, brother. I, I, I'd be shocked to see them running it right because most teams in the States can't fucking run it right. Please, I'd, I'd like to see that film, Jeff. Let's talk about that via email. Help you, help you decipher that shit. A lot of teams in the States struggle to run that. It's dope that you guys run it there. I don't know any teams in Germany that do that shit. I don't know. Guido, maybe you know. Coach Guido, do teams in Germany run read two? Uh, all right, here we go. So, again, right, they start an empty to figure out that it's man. When you see number 57 running all the way outside, you know that it's man-to-man. Because -man. if it was zone, they'd just stay in their regular alignment. But, but you bring the running back all the way out here to decide how are they going to cover it. Is he going to run out and cover him or are they just going to play zone? As soon as 57 runs out, you know that their original call is man-to-man. -man. But, again, it's the NFL. They have freedom to change all this shit as they go. But right now, it's looking like one high man, right? Third down, third and, third and what is it? Third and six, third and four. Everyone looks like they're pressed. You got nickel. You got nickel in here, right here, right? A nickel corner. So, so let's talk about nickel. They're actually in dime defense. So let's talk about dime real fast. Yeah, some run cover three pattern match, which is like a down the field thing. Not the same as like, yeah. Anyway, so let's talk about dime personnel, right? So basically, Nick, regular personnel means you have... The same amount of, you have four D linemen, three linebackers, or three D linemen, four linebackers, depending on your, your scheme, if you're a 4-3 or a 3-4. Once you go nickel, you remove a linebacker in exchange for, for a DB, someone who's better at covering. When you go dime, you remove two linebackers for two DBs, right? So you have one, two, three, four, five DBs on the field, right? Four D linemen. So this is nickel. Sorry, not dime. Because the safety's rolled down. So this is nickel coverage, or nickel personnel. And the only reason that's important is you just like teams have different calls at different personnel, right? They're not going to run a run heavy scheme out of nickel or dime personnel, but they're also not going to run probably drop eight out of regular personnel. So it's just important for you to know when you get to the higher levels, like what are the defensive personnel? What are their coverage calls out of those personnel? It helps you eliminate things, right? Again, like we talk about, let me just flip it real quick and talk about this. We talk about a lot how like coverages are not a guessing game. This is how you not, you don't make them a guessing game. You know, hey, they run five coverage at a nickel, five coverage at a dime, five at a regular. So if you're just aware of the personnel on the field, you've eliminated ten coverages, right? Because like, so like that's how you make it. Not, you're not you get overwhelmed thinking, fuck, they run fifteen coverages. Which one of the fifteen is it going to be? Just take a pick. Fuck that. You know, just based off personnel, they only have one of five coverages. Then you know, off down in distance, oh, their favorite coverage at a nickel personnel on third and four is this. And you can, and eighty five percent of the time, they like to run this coverage on third and four out of nickel personnel. So when you figure out those tendencies, you can go out and say, my 85% plan is going to be to go against this coverage. And if I'm wrong, I'll have a counter plan for that 15% that I probably won't see. That's how you simplify this shit. All right? Makes sense? It's not coming out and saying, fuck, what coverage could this be? It could be cover two, cover zero, cover fucking zebra. It could be any fucking coverage in the world. No. You watch film. You prepare. You create a plan. Okay, I know that they have these personnels and they run these coverage out of these personnels. Let's see, nickel, nickel, nickel. Now my mind goes, all right, they run these five coverages out of nickel because I studied my fucking thing. All right, third and four in nickel. You remember the game plan and it says 72% one high man. Well, I'm going to guess when I have all those fucking information, when I have all that information and then I see one high and the fucking linebacker out here, I'm 99% fucking sure it's one high man. The tendencies told me it was, the defensive personnel told me it was, and now the defensive formation told, tells me it is. If it, look, what is it, if it looks like a duck, it sounds like a duck, it's probably a fucking duck, right? If it looks like cover one, it walks like cover one, it's probably fucking cover one. No guessing here. So now go run your best fucking man beater route and go convert on third down. And they're running a little screen, Pat Mahomes gets nervous, and there goes the first defensive series of the game. But, right, everyone understand how we're thinking here? Please, please give me a little thumbs up in the... Okay, so now Jappa, here we go. Great question. Hey, Brandon. So Jappa now says... So let's talk about this. So now Jappa says, I guess the thing is how to adapt my job to when I know they're running and do that fast. So you're running a slant. Right? You, you know that if it's press man, you know if it's press man, you're going to have a different plan running a slant than you would if it's loose coverage man. Right? Like, 
Like it's it's not like your job may not change. Well, let's say you're running a shallow cross. Here's a great example. Let's say you're running a shallow cross. What do you want to do on a shallow cross versus man? You want to stair set him, right? So then the minute you see one high zone, you're immediately thinking, fuck, I'm going to run across him and stair set him. Whereas you see zone, you're now you're now thinking, or sorry, one high man, right? You know you're going to stair set. Now you see zone, you're thinking instead, I need to get to the open zone and potentially settle in that zone. Your, th- your mindset totally changes. Does that make sense? Like, like, so, but if you're running a goal ball, I mean, no, goal ball is bad. Like, all right, let's say, let's say, let's say this. Let's go again. Let's go again. Let's do this whole thing again. Okay. Let's keep giving you examples. Jap, I'll keep asking good questions. I can always count you for that. All right. So you're running a goal ball. You're Travis Kelsey down here. You're running a goal ball, right? This safety is kind of hanging out here. You're an inexperienced receiver. You're thinking, fuck, he's outside leverage. This could be covered too, right? Let's just say you're an idiot and you think this is covered too. Fine. If you're running a go, doesn't your plan change quite a bit? If it's man to man, you're going to take your time, fucking cook this guy at the line of scrimmage because you got to wipe your own ass at the line. The only time you can win on a go ball is right here. You're going to make, take your best release possible and go win because it's one high man. If all of a sudden this really was cover two, your plan's totally different. You got to stretch him outside and settle in this honey hole, right? So like, that's how your job changes on the fly. Like, you know, running a slant versus seven yards off man or seven yards off zone doesn't really vary very much. You know, it just depends on what it is. But if I'm running a stick route, let's go to the last example, right? Is this going to be one high man or one high zone? Let's say we don't know. Well, we got to figure it out and we got to use our context loops with this guy running out because if it's zone, I want to push up and settle in the zone. But if it's man, I might push my depth even more. I got to run away from this guy. Those are the kind of decisions you're trying to figure out pre-snap. And can you make them after the snap? Sure. But then your technique's going to falter. You're going to be thinking good now that we're back here. It was a little good. We're going to move on to the next play. Jap, are you good? Does that help you a little bit of, of, of the decisions you got to make and how, how coverages help determine your job? Adam, if you have anything to add. Derek, if you have anything to add. I'm just going to talk. You guys can just talk over me at some point. I don't really know how to do this with other people, so. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell Jap is hype because he's using exclamation points, and Jap are probably once a week is like, can we do more coverage talk? Can we do more coverage talk? So just so you guys know, uh, maybe some of the listeners don't know either while, while they go punt. Jappa was the first VIP. This kid, uh, Jappa, from Brazil, first VIP client I ever had. Before there ever was a VIP, three years ago. He randomly hit me up. I love your content. You're the best coach ever. Can you help make me better? Mm-hmm. And I charged him like per month to fucking just coach him up. And like was so overwhelmed that so much going on. It was hard for me to like keep up with him. I would, and like whatever. But I've been coaching this kid for like three years virtually. And then he won like Brazilian player of the year last year. That's dope. Like the whole country was like the best receiver in Brazil. That's Fucking dope. nasty, bro. That's He's the man. Jap is like literally the poster child for South by Hustle VIP. <laughs> and then when I hit Brazil, when I come to Brazil, Jappa, it's on, bro. Show me all the finest Brazilian women the world has to offer. <laughs> all right, here we go. Next up, it's fucking a shitty ass Jimmy Garoppolo in the 49ers. All right, again. So now let's look at the difference with motion. Is anyone running with him? No one runs with him. So what's it tell us? One high zone. Everyone get that? One high zone. Now it's going to be two high zone because they adjust. But let's just, let's just watch this again, right? You know right away it's not man-to-man. Right now I know no one runs with me. It's not man-to-man. So now I'm thinking it's one high zone. But as soon as the safety starts to adjust, right now it's one high zone. But now he starts to come down. Now you're looking up. You're thinking, all right, something's up here. The other thing you know is here's a condensed formation here, right? Here's a tight, a nasty split, as they call it in the NFL, and we call it. Nasty split, meaning he's three yards from the tackle. Most teams like to cloud these tight splits, meaning they like to play cover two to those tight splits. So again, it's not a guessing game. It's not a random guessing game, okay? It is, you know, tendencies. Like, it is, it is, it is, a, figuring out coverage is more eliminating what the coverage isn't than figuring out what the coverage is. Like, I know they like to play cloud versus tight formation, so... It probably isn't anything but cloud. And here you go. There's your cloud. There's cover two. See this? Like, sure, it looks like one high zone. Let them fuck with you all you want. Your scouting report tells you that they're 80% too high zone versus versus nasty splits. I promise you. That's what it fucking says. 80% too high zone versus nasty splits. Here's my nasty split. Oh, shit. Looks like one high. But guess what? I'm not being fooled because I read my fucking scouting report and prepared for the Super Bowl. And fucking Honey Badger's not going to fool me. There he goes playing cover two. Here comes the safety coming down right away. And I'm prepared to go whoop his ass. Everyone see this? If I, if I think this is going to be one high loose cover three, I think he's going to backpedal right away. When I know that it's cover two, when I know it's cover two, I know the corner is the force player. 
okay? The force player means that it is his job to set the edge of the defense. He's going to scream down and force everything to come back in. He's going to be aggressive as fuck. So if I know this as the corner, I can as the receiver, I can expect to be equally as aggressive. I'm not going against a soft bail corner here. I'm going against somebody who wants to set the edge aggressively. So I better come with that same mentality in the run game or else I will ruin this shit. Cloud is another name for cover two, Jappa. Cloud is another name for cover two. A cloud means you have a low corner and a safety over the top. So if you play three cloud, we'll talk about that in a second. Let me not confuse you. So like, should he, would you rather that receiver attack him knowing that he's the cover two corner or kind of go flat and meet him? Um, no. So I think what he does is great. I think he just needs to know that, that he's, he wants to expand the edge. That's his job, yeah. right? Yeah. The corner's job is to tighten this edge and force everything in. Yeah. You just need to know that my job is not to hook him around and get here. I mean, it could be you could get all the way on the edge, but you you just want to open this gap. So you it's more so matching his aggressiveness, okay. more so than his than his path. Like he he decides he's gonna take an inside out path and widen this hole, okay? But he's not letting him match the aggress or he's not he's matching his aggressiveness, not letting him set the edge. Brandon says was good. All right. What's good, B? <laughs> All right, everyone see that? And, and again, 19 fucking, what's his name? Polly, Bourne, Kendrick Bourne. I like, I like Bourne, except he, he shows his, his workouts on Instagram a bit too much because he ain't be doing shit. He does the goofiest shit and puts a whole workout synopsis every day. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, please come train with me. It's bad. But all right, everyone see this? Like, this is how you, so again, you know the play's called in the huddle. It's not changing, right? They call it one play. Play's called in the huddle. All right, it's sweep right. I know I got this corner. All right, it's one high zone. Oh, shit, this guy's a, a pussy. He's just going to stay play cover three. I'm going to go attack him and just run him off. It's going to be easy. Nope. I know they like, they're they 80% you know, cloud to my tight splits. I know he's the force player. I'm going to be just as aggressive. I'm going to widen this edge and do my job. And he does a great job. He whoops the corner's ass. Sure. Everyone see that? Everyone understand the thought process that's going on mid-snap? Let's do this one more time. Let's just go through the thought process one more time. Okay? Man your zone. Let's watch it. All right, it's zone. Nobody runs with them. They just bump over. Now, what kind of zone? Looks like one high, but my scouting report tells me that, that it's mostly cloud and tight formations. Here comes the cloud. Even though they disguised it, I'm ready to do my job and widen the hole because I fucking prepared. Now, did it matter on that plane? No, but at least you're grading out as a fucking plus plus on your grade sheet. Brandon knows what a plus or a plus, not a plus plus. Brandon knows all that well. Too well. Getting those minuses on the grade sheet, baby. Yeah, the D-line is cold. Yeah, the D-line's cold as fuck. Frank Clark is one of the, is a freak of nature, bro. He played at Michigan. When we were playing, when we were preparing for Michigan, we saw Frank Clark hurdle seven different running backs inside the quarterback. I'm talking about like running back went to go <laughs> cut him or whatever. They fucking hurt. He would hurdle him and make the sack. Can't we say that they give away that it's not one high? Look how far over that high safety is. Yeah, hundred percent. But I mean, he started in the middle at first, then he starts, to, then he bumps over. Yeah, like you, you know that. But like this near safety doesn't tell you like. The back, the, the weak safety, this is a great question, Booby Miles. The weak safety, or what's his name? Bobby, Bobby Bejos. Sorry, you know, sometimes I just be reading screen names, but I actually, <laughs> I actually know these guys personally. Dario gave me a look. Uh, you steal a release. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. No, Bobby, you're 100% correct. But like, understand this, like, let's go back, right? You, you, you can't, like, don't let this guy fucking trick you also. Because the minute you think that, that, so listen, Bobby, here's the issue with your thought process. The minute you think that, oh, this, that, that safety moved over, it can't be one high. All right, so this is what you're saying. You're saying there's no way it can be one high because this safety moved over here. Like, really? You don't think this guy could get to this hash fast enough? You don't think, like, I get these bumped over, but he could be disguising too. Like, you're telling me this guy can't get to there? So usually I use all the clues of the test. You know what I'm saying? So like, sure. The other thing I'll tell you, is I don't if you're this safe if you're this receiver right here I don't want you to look at the backside safety. Let's talk about this now. What do we read to determine coverages, guys? Your coverage triangle: the corner, linebacker, and safety closest to me. The coverage triangle is eventually going to give it away. Here, here it comes, right? Like here comes the triangle that's going to give it away. Right there, it's a cover two triangle every time. It's a cover two triangle. You start worrying about the backside safety, like he can disguise all kinds of shit. Like, sure, that is one tendency that tells you, but there's nothing stopping, like, there's nothing stopping, right? So Bobby's going to say that that backside safety tells me that it's, that it's definitely too high. There is absolutely nothing stopping this 54 from blitzing off the edge, Honey Badger from replacing him as the force player, and this guy's spinning to the top. He's got to go, he doesn't have to go very far. It's a tight formation, 
right? Uh, it could be a cover four triangle, Jappa, but it, you know it's not cover four because that their tendency being heavy cloud to, to, to tight formations. That's why. The corner kind of gives it away too. Yeah, the, and the corner's a low and outside leverage. It, so that that so like the biggest the teams generally don't play cover four to uh, tight formations because the offenses get in tight formations to throw to to attack the sidelines, right? Offenses condense receivers so they have more room to attack the sidelines. So the way that defenses attack that is they play with a low corner who can rob that shit. So just off f- tendencies, there's nothing on film really that, that lets me know it's not cover four. I'm just using my common sense and the tendencies that I'm sure are in the game plan that show that they like to play this hard corner. Fuck me, what did I just do? Anyway, there's something in the game plan that show they like to play this hard corner to, to tight formations. They have this coach's film available? Yeah, well? the coach's film is available. All right, Bobby, that makes sense to you? If it doesn't make sense or anything you disagree with anything, please, please ask. All right, Jeff, does that make sense? You give me the fucking three dots like you're just pretending to make sense. I don't need that fucking shit from you right now. I need you to fucking understand it. All right, so Jeff has said, why isn't a cover four triangle, right? Just because you know teams, like, if they were playing four, it is stealing to run a speed out all day, right? If they were playing four, it's his job, it's, it's the safety's job now to get involved in the run game, right? Cover four, the safety is the next defender in the box. He don't look like he's the next defender in the box anytime soon. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, that's why it's not four. Like, four means the safety is the ninth player in the box, and he's basically playing man-to-man, the, the, the outside defense, the outside uh, corner. But no, he's the force player because he wants to set the edge and defend the flat versus a tight split. Well, this is fun. I'm not going to lie. This coverage shit. This is fucking dope. We've watched three plays, and I feel like I've taught them more in three plays than I've, about coverage than I ever have. So how do you feel about this? Zoom and tell us. Safety's live. Don't. Really don't. No, get the fuck out of here. No, he didn't. No, he fucking didn't. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. It's the opposite, bro. So he's like, look at the... Holy the shit. He's got to be the dumbest fucking coach in the world, this guy. Really told you all that? Bro, he really told you that? Mm. It's the opposite, guys. Don't ever listen to anything this fucking guy says. <laughs> this receiver's coach. This is the guy that took over for me at Wesleyan. So here's the, here's the general rule, right? I'm sweating my ass off. The general rule is... Don't pay attention to the leverage of corners because corners can lie. Safeties can't. Mm. It's the opposite. Like, safeties can disguise shit before the ball is snapped. Just like you saw Honey Badger, they have to get to their alignment. If he wants to play cover two, he's got to get 12 yards off the hash. He can disguise it all he wants. By the time the ball is snapped, he's got to get to his alignment. Guess what? A corner can play man-to-man. A corner can play cover three from press, from press bail, from seven yards off. He can do that same thing. A corner can play cover two from press, from seven yards off and slice. He can do it from a million ways. The safety has to get to where he wants to go by the time the ball is snapped. So it is literally the opposite. That's literally the worst coaching I've ever heard in my fucking life. (laughs) That is the worst coaching I've ever fucking heard. And you wonder why people got to pay for my fucking VIP program because coaches all around the world suck. Except for you, Coach Guido. And all the other coaches watching, I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, for real, bro, that shit is frustrating, bro. Sa- corners lie, or safeties lie, corners don't. It is the fucking opposite. Safeties have to get to their alignment. Corners can do whatever the fuck they want. Why is what, Joseph? Why is what? Why is... Why is why? Does that make sense, everyone, though, before we continue? Is everyone good here? Everyone makes sense. Everyone everyone fucking get it. What's the coverage? I don't know what they're playing here. Some sort of one high. I said two because that corner, right? Where's the corner? Two. There's no safety over the top. That's the same, I think that's the safety right there. That's a, mm-hmm. I think, yeah. That's the same linebacker. Isn't that the old number right They there? might be in like some jumbo package because they're yeah. in jumbo, to be honest. It's weird. Looks like they're playing three with man backside. That's what I would call this. 3X? Oh, no, no, no. Those are all my jokes up top. I think. They got the fullback in the game. Why can't safeties lie? Just explain this, Joseph. Let's Let's... So, you know, what's the Michael Scott line? Explain this to me like I'm in third grade. No, I can't. Uh, Bobby, we'll talk about this in a second. And you guys know whenever I say shit like that, I'm not making fun of you. I'm just being funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, 
This is, this is a good question, Joseph. We're going to fucking get better right here. Why can't safeties lie? Okay. So they can lie, but they just can't lie as much. This corner can play any coverage in America from this position. He could, he could shift to inside leverage at the last minute and play man-to-man. He could play outside leverage man-to-man. He could fucking flip and funnel you inside and play cover two. He could bail and play cover three and look exactly like this the whole time. Exactly like this. This safety, he can sit here all he wants and try to disguise. When the ball is snapped, if he wants to be a roll safety, he needs to roll. Okay? You see Honey Badger? Honey Badger can sit here and disguise his bullshit all he wants and hang out down here. If he wants to be a cover two safety, which he is, he needs to get to a cover two alignment before the ball snaps. Look at him trying to disguise it. Go ahead, Honey Badger, disguise it. You're fucking real cute. You're real fucking clever. Blah, blah, blah. I know you're a cover two safety because you just gave it away. You can't lie. There he is playing cover two. Get it? They, safeties can't lie. He could still be playing anything in the book. He can still bail. He can, like, he can still be doing a bunch of different things. It's these guys that give you the information. It's them that give you the information. Keep your eyes up. Watch the safety study their alignments on film. Right? Bobby said, well, don't we know it's cover two because this guy's right here? Like, sure, but he can lie until the last minute. We don't know it's cover two or too high until right now. Now we know. Now we know. Make sense? Everyone good? And again, this is the NFL. This is the Super Bowl. This is week fucking 25 of the NFL season. This is the most advanced shit you'll ever see. As far as disguises, all that stuff. Most of you guys are all going to see things much simpler. Week one of the NFL season is going to be much simpler. Like this is the most advanced coverage disguises you will see, which is, which is probably really good for you guys to, 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 to study. We're going to go for like another 15 minutes and then I got to go, but this has been fucking exhilarating. I'm, and I'm not being sarcastic, even though I usually I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> it's funny that you got to say that. So safeties can only lie until the ball snaps. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Safeties can only buy until, lie until the ball is snapped. Uh, and even then, like, even then, Alex, like, especially at the lower levels, bro, how many fucking high school safeties are really disguising shit that well? Are they already in it? You know what I'm saying? Like, like they got to just start it. But a high school corner, the high school corner can, 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 you know, he can play press or press bail. He can play outside leverage man or inside leverage man. That guy can disguise a little bit more. Yo, Luke, where are all those slides from Germany? The slides I had or the slides someone else had? Who had the slides from Germany, Luke? Where are those? No, Luke, we saw the like really simple coverage explanation and Luke goes, you never told me that. And I was like, motherfucker, <laughs> if you don't shut your ass up, talk about this shit every fucking day. You just chose not to listen. Luke, where are those slides though? I need to find that coverage thing. Oh, that's what it is. Yo, yo, hold on. Damn, look at all the things I said that I have to say coverages. <laughs> Holy fuck. Yo, where was that? That was Treaster shit, right? Oh, shit. Where do I find that? Oh, if I could find this real quick. Yo, Luke, you, 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 yeah, it's, it's Chris's stuff. Damn, yo, I don't even remember where to look for this. Oh, what's this thing called? D1 Theory? Sorry guys, this is this is worth it though if we can find it. All right, we're gonna have to uh, find Luke's uh, coverage pictures another day. Yeah, put that back. That's where all the goodies are at, boy. Why don't you just not touch things while we're uh, in the middle of this? My lord. You're one of a kind. That 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 Thank is you. what you you want to do here. Appreciate that. This is what happens when I invite people to the party, guys. It just becomes a buffoon show. All right, let's go back to coverages. Yeah, I, I gotta find Chris. I have it saved somewhere. It's a nice VIP. It's good VIP bean talk. Much more casual, much more fun with my boys than it is with the general public. All right, everyone, go. Why safeties can't can lie and or why safeties can't lie in corner scan. Yeah, I'm gonna try and find that in a second. I'm gonna let Adam tell his life story while I look for these coverages in a sec. All right, I want to skip this one because I don't really know what they're doing. I think they're in some sort of different thing for game plan wise. All right, here's Debo Samuel. We're going to do something fun. All right. What's the coverage? Right? Again, Honey Badger can be as cute as he wants. 
What's the coverage right now? Looks like one high, potentially. Right? Looks like one high, maybe. Like, they're trying to fuck around. But, like, no. Safeties can't lie. There we go. Cover two. This is actually cover six. Okay, let's talk about cover six. Cover six is quarter, quarter, half. Or some people call it cover eight, but it's generally called cover, cover, si- or cover six. Cover, cover six. Quarter, quarter, half. Meaning, playing the quarter, playing the quarter. Right? So, quarters, quarters, and then cover two to this side. Okay, so he, and I would say the reason for that is just field boundary, most likely. I say they probably want to play, I'm not going to speculate on that. So they got a fullback back here, they got another back back here. Quarter, quarter, half is uh, just a common coverage. I'm not going to try and guess why they're playing quarter, quarter, half. But they're playing quarter, quarter, half. Um, it's a good run support coverage to the boundary. And it's a good field coverage, uh, you know. So let's watch this. Make a little end around here. It's a cool little play right there. Look how pussy these corners are, bro. This is why corners live a sad life. Watch this man out here. It's Peters, ain't it? Yeah. He's talking crazy, too. He's a good player. All right, so now let's talk about quarter, quarter, half, right? So in, in cover two, this guy is the force player, this corner. The force player means it's his job to set the edge of the defense and force everything back. So you got to know that in the run game because you got to know, fuck, if he's the force player and we're running an end around, I want to kick him out. But he's not the force player because it's cover four. This guy is the force player. Number, f- I think this is Frank Clark. Uh, but this linebacker standing up right here, he's the force player because he's the flat defender and he's also here to force everything back. So what you want to do in this play, this end around, you want to influence this force player. You want to get this force player to chase and they have no edge. They can't set the edge. Let's see if they can do that. Here comes the force player. He doesn't really chase, but he also... Oh, so he does set the edge, right? So he, do, he actually does his job. The force player does his job. He really does. His job is to stay on the outside half of anybody and force everything back in, right? Does he do that? Yep, he forces everything back in. Problem is, it's Debo Samuel with a lead blocker, and they're still fucked. Not really much to watch here, but just a good little... Uh, Good little thing right here. This fucking Emmanuel Sanders don't want to block anybody. Emmanuel Sanders is one of my least favorite receivers. Really? I think he I think he talks so much shit and he thinks he's fucking Antonio Brown and he's not. He talks like he's a fucking Hall of Famer and like he just doesn't do it for me, bro. You should watch, watch the fucking play where Grappolo overthrew him and he looked right out of his break instead of keeping his head down and running. Like he just does shit like that all the time. But he'll be the for, first to say like. You know, you're a real man. You do this. Like, shut the fuck up, bro. Shut up. There's a, like, shut up. There's a reason why everyone's always trading you and you can't fucking stick on one team. Like, uh, he just talks too much shit. Just do your job. Uh, the force player is always going to be the outside player. Like, yes. It's either going to be the linebacker or the corner or, the, or sometimes the safety. It is the... Fl- hey, how about this? The force player is the flat defender, Jappa. Always. The flat defender is also the force player. So if someone's, the, if someone's job is to defend the flat in, the cor- in, in cover two... It's the corner's job to defend the flat. So he's going to force everything in in the run game. In cover four or cover three, it is that safety rolled down to that linebacker to the outside who's, who's the flat player. He's also the force player in the run. Obviously, the Chiefs like to play what kind of coverage? Too high zone, right? So that's the other thing you know, right? Like That's why all these disguises don't work. Because like based on film... I bet they never fucking do this. So, like, they're just, like, being, like, like Honey Badger just entertaining himself here. Unless you're a moron. Unless you just didn't study the fucking game plan. But if you studied the game plan, I bet you had said they're going to play two high zone all the time. Safeties really don't, lie. Safeties don't fucking lie. They never lie. They, give it away every time. they never lie. They give it away. Just look at nothing but the safeties. Look at Honey Badger. Really, you want to know who tells everything in the Chiefs defense? <laughs> Number 32. Right <laughs> figure out what 32 is doing, and you can figure out what the defense is. And that's for most most times, like that weak safety, that that rover safety like this, is is that guy. You like Connor Matthew? He's a dog for sure. Emmanuel was with us when we ran hills in Denver and didn't want the smoke for two weeks. It doesn't fucking surprise me, bro. Don't get me started with these fucking clowns. These guys in the NFL that talk shit and make too much money, but they're just like, you know what? Emmanuel Sanders is gonna go down as an average football player. I don't know why I'm hating on this guy so much, but I just like. Guys just think they're bigger than they are. It's the talk that comes with It's the talk. Like, just do your job. Just do your job and win more games. And maybe you'll leave a legacy. 
And with that said, Emmanuel Sanders is a fucking baller compared to other people. Like, he's a baller compared to the general public. But he's not going to leave the legacy he wanted to leave. All right, so the other thing with this, right? Let's say you have an MDM block. MDM block in the run game. Most dangerous man. You're either blocking him or him. In cover two, you're always, almost always want to block the force player. Right? Cover two. If it's cover four and he starts backpedaling at the snap, then you got to figure out who is the most dangerous guy, who's the biggest threat. You might block one or the other. But cover two, you're always going to block this force player. Most dangerous block. So there he goes. See how he's just wide. See how, who's that? Sanders down there? Right? So Sanders is a, is a, is, you know, a puss and doesn't want to block anybody. But you can see what he's trying to do. He realizes that the ball's coming his way. He realizes he's blocking the force player. So all he's trying to do is widen that hole. Right? Just watch him. He's just trying to expand this guy. Expand, 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 widen the hole for this to run and cut back inside. Now, what does Sanders do terribly besides everything? He doesn't take the air out. Right? We talk about this in the run game. Watch how he's... Guido, we just had this fucking run call yesterday. Okay? Show your fucking guys this, Guido. Okay? We just did this with the fucking Frankfurt Universe yesterday. Talk about taking the air out. This is why you take the air out. Watch him. Watch Emmanuel Sanders. His arm's going to be fully extended, and he's going to get ragdolled at the end. Ragdolled, and I'm going to make the tackle. Okay? And, and everyone thinks, oh, this is fine. This is fine. It's an eight-yard gain. Good job, guys. No, fuck you. How about you do your fucking job like a professional? Let's say we block this guy. Let's say we fucking do our job and block him. It's a fucking touchdown in the Super Bowl. We got one guy to miss. If we do our job out here on the edge and do what all this fucking talk is supposed to earn our money for, then we are scoring a touchdown in the Super Bowl. But instead, it's an eight-yard gain because I'm too busy talking shit and wearing gold chains around my neck instead of doing my fucking job. Let's just watch this, right? Let's just watch fucking... If, if this fucking veteran... This fucking goat would just do his job. It's a quick 7 0. It's a, ch- it's, it's a real fucking chance to be 7 0. You, you guys see this? If we make our block on the perimeter, you have a real fucking chance to be up 7 0 in the first quarter of the Super Bowl. Look at this picture. Look at this picture. You're one on one on the safety. That's what every fucking offensive coordinator's dream is. You are about to be one on one on the safety. Is Honey Badger a great player? Probably one of the best top five or 10 defensive players in football? Yeah. So might he make the tackle? Sure. But you're giving yourself a chance for one-on-one in the open field to make one guy miss and score a touchdown. But no, we don't want to do our job. So instead, it's a nine-yard game. And just help your guy up, and that's good. Good fucking job. I can't fucking stand that shit, bro. Can't stand it. Can't stand it. Let corners make fucking pat- tackles. Let corners make tackles. There you go. Z- all these guys see it. Xavier just joined yesterday. My boy Xavier19 joined the program yesterday. He fucking gets it. He didn't do his 111th, and he was the difference between six yards and six points. You're my type of guy, Xavier. I don't even fucking know you yet. My type of fucking guy. This one gave it away right away. Why did this one give it away? What the coverage was. Because the motion. Guys. Now, even the motion doesn't fully give it away because they start off in twins, right? Two guys here, tight end backside. So a lot of times, even if they are playing something else, the corner will start over there. And again, it's NFL, but like, yeah, you're thinking it's man to man. Now, the other thing that gives it away, right? Safeties don't lie. Safeties don't lie. What's the honey badger doing? He's giving it away. He's telling you what he's doing. Uh, He looks like he wants to make a tackle or defend Greg Kittle, one or the other. Sure as hell ain't playing cover two. Right? Because safeties can't fucking lie. Now we're going to run with them, and there's your one high man. And there's the punt team coming on the field. But again, just, just figuring out the coverages, right? Like, let's watch him run with them. Let's watch this guy run. All right. He doesn't even run with them, really. They switch off. So you don't really even know. Because wa- let's watch this carefully. They don't even really run. Watch, watch uh, who's 21 again? Peters. So watch Peters. He actually switches this off. He says, no, you got it, you got it, you got it. But he's still got someone running. Like, whatever. All right. But you know right now it's, a, it's, it's one high something because this guy's certainly not playing anything deep. Now when you go back with the motion, now everyone can have their man-to-man plan. This is a one high man-to-man plan. Now they're going to run the ball, so it's whatever. But so if someone was asking, who was asking, uh, when is there a situation to steal a release? Who asked this? So Joseph Young said, when is the situation to steal a release? Right here. If I am, uh, who's this, Kendrick Bourne? If I'm Kendrick Bourne. Oh, that's, um, that's Debo. Oh, that's Debo? Yeah, that's Debo over there. So never mind. Debo, Debo had to, they, they had Debo inserting. 
So you can see Debo's job was to insert. But let's say Debo's job wasn't to insert. Let's say his job wasn't to insert and block this guy. He was to block, to block the corner. This would be a situation where you know it's man to man. You know it's a run play away from you. That would be a situation to steal a release. Everyone get that? If if his his job his assignment on paper was to down block and insert and block this guy. If your assignment wasn't that, if your assignment wasn't to down block and block this guy, then your job would just be to run him off. So instead of running him off, right? Instead of running him off, you would steal a release and gain information from that. Sideline. All right, everyone see that? Good. We're about uh, five minutes away from being done. Let's, let's go to the fourth quarter. That's where the action happened. End of quarter three. Let's watch this shit. Here we go. Fourth quarter. We got a few more we can watch, and then I got to go because I'm sweating. What's the coverage? What type of coverage is it? Man or zone? Zone, right? Everyone see? Again. It's zone. What type of zone is it? One high or two high? Safety's going to have a hard time playing cover two from there, right? So it looks like it's one high zone. There we go. It's cover three. No, it's three. This is zone, guys. You see how Sherman, you see how Sherman plays zone? Watch the cornerback side. Watch these guys. This is not cover one. This is cover three. Okay, cover one is man to man. Cover three is zone. Who's that? Dremel? I think. Okay, this is cover three, not cover one. If it was one, then Sherman wouldn't allow the tight end to run free right here while he's playing his own defense. Okay, if it was one, the corner up top wouldn't turn inside looking at the quarterback. If it was one, he'd be staring at the defender. So let's talk about a zone turn or a man turn. That's a zone turn. When I turn in, when I turn in to face, when I turn in to face the quarterback, that's a zone turn. I want to see the ball. If I turn and face the defender, that's a man turn. Okay, because I just want to see the man. Okay, so that's cover three. Force player, flat defender, cover three, one high zone. When you zone turn, that's when you chase the near hip, right? Yo, Alex, man, you're learning fast, bro. That's exactly right. Let's talk about this real quick. Alex said when he zone turns, that's when we chase the near hip, right? He's exactly right. Zone turn, chase the near hip, find the blind spot. Zone turn, go ahead, Sammy. Chase the near hip, find the blind spot. There he goes, chasing that near hip, find the blind spot. Look at him. Look at him. Because he's fucking an NFL receiver. He's well coached. Watch Sammy Watkins chase the near hip, get in the blind spot. Boom. Corner does a great job staying over the top, has really good coverage, but he does a good job trying to find that blind spot. Let's find this play with, uh, let's find the Sammy Watkins play. Oh, end of quarter one. That's not what we're looking for. So what was it? Damian Williams with the middle. Touchdown. Pat Mahomes, Damian Williams. Where's the fucking Sammy Watkins play? Short pass to cut Travis Kelsey. Was it down later? No, it was earlier. It was like early in the fourth quarter, wasn't it? I think so. Pat Mahomes, Travis Kelsey. It was like around here, right? Hold on, I'll let you guys watch the film while I look at this. Sorry. Yeah, he got intercepted there. Damn, where is this? Sammy Watkins pushed out of bounds for 38 yards. All right, here we go. Still on Sherman? I think so. 
Yeah, he definitely should have gone more into the blind spot because he couldn't. Uh, I mean, Jeff, he's running the post. Like at some point, he's got to break to the post. You know what I'm saying? Like he did. The corner did a good job staying over the top and, and getting his width. Sometimes it happens. Like you can't. You, not not every route is meant to get open all the time. Sometimes you got to get your buddies open. So if the corner plays a good, does a great job. Guys, right, so Jappa says, I feel like that guy should go even more into his, into the blind spot. Is there a reason for not doing that? Because you don't want to sacrifice the integrity of the play. It's not about you. It's not, it's not just your job to get yourself open and not worry about anyone else. Right? No, I don't think Sammy could have found the blind spot earlier because if he did, it would have given away what he was doing. Like he was trying to sell that he was running a vertical late and then get to the post and then break across. But it's not just about getting yourself open. Right? You get to the blind spot. You do your job. If he defends it well, then run the guy off and, and get your buddy open. Anyway, what were you guys saying? I don't know. Let's continue. All right, so here we go. Sammy Watkins down bottom is my favorite Sammy Watkins play of all time. Guess what, guys? Safeties don't lie. What are they doing? Let's fucking watch this, you fucks. It's the last play we're going to watch. Safeties don't fucking lie. And I just <laughs> missed the play. God damn it. I try to get all fucking fired up and add some entertainment to our lives. All right, safeties don't lie. Let's watch safeties not lying. Let's watch safeties not lying. What's the coverage? Looks like too high. Except what? Safeties can't lie. Here comes the blitz. Here he comes rolling. Safeties don't lie. He looks like he's lying. <laughs> you fucks. <laughs> they all started laughing at that. He looks like he's lying, right? But no one's ever played cover two looking at the middle of the field. Right? No one's ever played cover two looking at the middle of the field. So here he goes. Backside safety. He's not lying. He's telling you where he wants to go. He's telling you where he wants to go. Right? Here's the other thing to be aware of. Here's the last lesson of the day. Something that is important, okay? Something that is important is, is the defender capped or uncapped? Okay, what I mean by that is, is he capped? Is there someone behind him? So this defender is capped because there's someone behind him to replace him. So that means that he is always a threat to blitz. This guy can always be a threat to blitz because there's someone behind him. Right, so it's important to know, like it's important if 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 the, the the safety rotated the other way, right? If this safety rolled down and this safety rolled to the middle of the field, this defender becomes uncapped, meaning there's no one behind him. He can never blitz unless it's a really unsound defense. Does that that makes sense, everyone? No defense is going to leave a guy wide open. So the only way this guy can blitz is if he's capped. The minute this safety were to roll this way, he becomes an uncapped defender, and you know he's no longer a threat to blitz. Okay, similarly. Once this guy rolls, this will linebacker it can no longer blitz. It's a little different in the box, but like someone's got to defend the flat. Someone's got to defend over here. Like once he rolls this way, he becomes uncapped. He, he's no longer going to blitz. Okay. Man pressure. Or sorry, zone pressure. Or man pressure. They're going to bring the nickel Sam off the edge. They're going to roll the safety down. And they're going to play man to man. Looks like they're zoning the back or just playing like one kind of hole, okay? Robber. Yeah, like one robber with the two, the, two, the two backers in the middle. We got two minutes left, guys. We went a full hour. Look at that. I promised myself I wouldn't go a full hour because I have stuff to do, and that's how much I love you guys. All right? So now you know if you're Sammy Watkins, what else do you know? He's running away. What do you got? You got man-to-man, -man, outside leverage man. Fucking take your best. This is the fucking moment you've been waiting for. Fourth quarter of the Super Bowl, best fucking corner in the league, more man to man go bowl. It's a fucking receiver's dream, right? You know, right now that, that you planned all week, all week. You said, I got my go-to release. If I get a one-on-one -on -one opportunity, I got this go-to release. You've had it in your plan all week. Coach Dub, who I talk about all the time, he coaches Sammy Watkins and Devonte Adams. Two weeks before this, Devonte Adams won on an inside release. Coach Dub told me the story. So Dub called Sammy Watkins and said, if you get this opportunity, think about an inside release. That's what he, he told me the story multiple times. So let's see. Huh, there's the inside release. And there's their fucking game-winning play right here. And now Sammy Watkins is a hero and a Chiefs Hall of Famer for life. Let's watch it again. Thanks. It's the truth. It's the fucking truth. The guy could have been an irrelevant Chiefs player. Now he's going to be a fucking, they're going to have a statue over him. They're named Sammy Watkins Boulevard because of this play. You guys think I'm fucking kidding. It's the truth. Because he was ready for his fucking moment. He prepared for his moment and he was ready. Give me that inside release. Boom. All right, before this thing cuts off on me, I got to go. I love you. I'll see you guys next week.